Now let's start to have some fun. So we've got a program here that's like, if I run Python, I've got my scraper.py. It goes through that one web page and it gives me all the titles and links that I could reformat and I could make my own web page automatically every hour out of this, right? You could do uh, apt install Apache 2. You could redirect this. I could do it like this. I could Python scraper.py and I could call this mypage.html, except with Apache installed, it would be something like var www.html, mypage.html. I could add a cron job. And every hour it would create a page that has information that's formatted. So maybe you could even click on the titles. We could get in there and we could modify that out to do it, right? Um, but let's let's make it sort of go out and start crawling the internet. Okay, so we're going to MKDIR inside of soup too. And let's create a folder called crawler because this is going to, you're going to junk up your folder here pretty good. Uh, let's do a CP or scraper.py into crawler. All right, and then foreground anything open and close it so that you don't have the wrong copy because now we have several copies of this thing called Scraper. So make sure you don't have anything in the background right now. Let's CD into Crawler and let's pico scraper.py. All right, so we are crawling through Ars Technica and we're grabbing titles, uh, we're grabbing text from the H2 tag and we are extracting links to go along with it. Good times, all right. Now that we've got a link, we can go to every one of those links too, right? Because we've extracted valid HTTPS sites. So we can go to every one of those sites and we can start to fetch those and crawl those. In this case, let's just fetch them to the file system inside of this for loop and let's create um, a file for every web page that we find there. Just something we can do. And if we look inside of Python, how to create a, a text file, it's a pretty easy concept. You just do an f.open and you pass it the file name. Um, if we look at W3Schools, they make it pretty obvious too, right? Um, so we can create, open a file, we can write to the file, and then we can close the file. So for every link that we're discovering here, let's create a new file. Let's fetch the contents of that link and then put it in a file so that we're kind of creating an archive here and we're moving through the web. So if I do this, let's think about what this is going to do. So here I am inside of my for loop. And uh, we've gone through every list item and we've extracted text and we've extracted an href link that's good. And so we pulled in an HTTPS. Now let's create an object called page2 here up at the top. We said page, and let's use our requests library to get that link into a page. And let's go ahead, and we can do this any way you want. Let's create a file called f, and let's open a file that is h2taggget.txt. So that's up here. We're going to create a file that is the headline. And in, we're going to open it up so that we can write to it. And inside of that, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to write page2.content. We could go in and we could take, we could prettify each one of them too pretty easily. Let's, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Once things are opened, once we've got our page2, let's modify this. Request, let's go in and let's create another soup object. I'll call this soup one this time just to prevent confusion. And let's go ahead and do a beautiful soup. I'm just looking up at the top here. Page two dot content. And it's an HTML parser for every page in this list. That looks pretty good. All right. And uh, let's. Now that we've got an object called soup1, we could write soup1 dot prettify. All right, let's see if this works. So get your program looking like that. Kind of think about it a little bit. What are we doing here inside of this for loop? 
minimize that. Now make sure you're in your crawler directory and let's see if this works. This is a chance because I don't know if this is going to work or not. I probably made a mistake. Scraper.py. It's going to start to chug through and you can see that I currently have an error. And we have an f.write soup onepritify It didn't like that because there's like a special character in there. Let's do an ls and see if anything came along there. It did start to create one file for us, but then it broke. So Unicode encode error, ASCII codec can't encode character in position 58, ordinal not in range. All right, so that's something that it would be pretty good to hack out, but let's go ahead and let's not do that. Let's get rid of the soup call. So now we've got a page two, and we're creating a file that is the title, this h2 tag get text. And let's, we could have probably just put soup1, actually. That would have worked, I bet. Uh, but let's do a page2.content. Because when we fetch the page, we know page2.content will create that page. Make it look like that. And let's see what happens now. So it's going through, it's finding all of those articles. Great. Now when I do an ls, I have all of these files on here. I'll do an lsalh. And you can see that we've fetched all of those articles. So let's do a can't watch tenant. Pico, C-A-N, can't, and then a tab. And it'll say, oh, that's the file you want to open. And here is that article, which came from the Ars Technica website as well, because it's linked there, but it doesn't necessarily have to. Those links could have gone off anywhere. All right, so here's what I'd like for this piece here. Show me that when you type LSALH, you have a list of files, and you've downloaded every web page that they have on there that they're referencing through the Ars Technica front page as well. Snipping tool of this.